I've been having trouble singing. Remind me of the lyric of your latest song. Uh, she says she from the island. Isn't that concerning? Welcome back to Cashflow Combos. Today we're here with the viral sensation, Mr. Isn't That Concerning, Fahad. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure having you on, man. Yeah. Uh, so, so tell us a bit about yourself, man. Yeah, so um, I just, so apart from the Isn't That Concerning content, I make a lot of content for businesses and individuals mm. in the UAE, Qatar, Saudi. And uh, essentially, my work is trying to make people go viral organically. Okay. And of course, you've seen the Isn't That Concerning uh, parody clips. That's just something I do for a hobby on the side. Yeah. But yeah, man, I mean, uh, besides that, I love to eat. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's all about content. Yeah, yeah. So what kind of got you interested in like content creation? And things so like um, I, I watched a lot of Just Rain on YouTube. Just yeah, Rain, yeah. That, that was a big factor in me getting into the world of content creation. And so I was like, I want to do this, but I just didn't know how to. And Snapchat was popping off at that time. Vine was towards its decline. And slowly, I got on Twitter, I remember I used to post a lot of random funny clips that was funny to me. And then people started picking up on it. And then from that, it kind of went into skits. And then it slowly, like it just, I just grew this hobby into a business, I would say. It wasn't that I knew when I was like a kid that I want to do filmmaking or content creation as such. I wanted to get into robotics engineering. Yeah. It's a completely different space. But then it just kind of naturally happened. Yeah. 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 Which clip made you viral then? So there was this clip on Twitter. Actually, this was a very long time ago. It was a voice note of my mother cursing me <laughs> because I tore my shalwar kameez yeah, on yeah. Eid. And that got picked up by some random memes page in uh, Instagram. And I was like, this thing works. Like people pick up your content and they repost it. And then from there on, it was like, I think there was another video of mine, which uh, I don't know if you've seen those robots where they're just kind of uh, AI assistants standing in kiosks. Yeah. So th it kind of shakes your hand, like it waves at you. So I, I made a video of me walking towards one of these robots and uh, just fake shook my hand. Like I just moved my hand back when it was about to shake my hand and that blew up. Puberty posted that and then kind of from there it just went on. Okay, so you've been like reposted by like big yeah. meme pages. And that stuff was like. in 2020, 2019. You yeah. say that like helped you with like... Um, 100%. It kind of puts you through a lot of accounts. Like people get to know about you. Like you get a lot of followers. But the big break came in... 2021 if i'm not mistaken or 2022 with which was uh, become a chair content which wasn't isn't that concerning content where i was making fun of gary Vee. that's okay. that's when i really saw a strong reach coming towards myself a lot of big superstars yeah because I've, I've seen you do uh some videos with jason ruler as well yeah that, that was like this month yeah, that, yeah that's how are you clubbing with these kind of people so jason derulo happened through tiktok itself so i have a manager in tiktok and they reached out to me and they were like, look, this is super confidential. We're doing a meetup with Jason Derulo. If you're interested, you can come create content with him. And I was like, sure. And <laughs> that's it. Like, I guess yeah, it was yeah. because of the reach that I had on my account. Mm. And so they were picking some of the biggest influencers within the Middle East. And I just responded on the, at the right time, I would say. Yeah. What was that experience like then? Just it was great, man. I mean, Jason Derulo is a very humble guy, I would say, like... Yeah whatever I told him he was down to do mm. and you you'd feel a little bit nervous because someone as big as that guy is in front of you and you're just like shit what am I gonna do <laughs> but he made it look like it's just another video that you're shooting yeah, yeah. and it was sick I mean a lot of people were like psyched they were like wow how did you do that and I was like bro it kind of just fell in my lap <laughs> I didn't predict it or something yeah no yeah. that's big man when I first reached out to you I saw your uh, Instagram most of your covers are the same so how do you um, get people to click and they'll so, know how, what the content is when you're scrolling on Instagram reels you're not clicking on anything mm. you're just scrolling yeah. mm. so it doesn't matter what your cover is Okay. because unless someone opens your profile and then they're going to scroll on your grid to select the content 
but 50 million views or 20 million views will not come by people opening your profile and clicking on your feed. It'll mm -hmm. come from the algorithm, the vertical feed. So in my opinion, a thumbnail, which you call it a cover, only matters if people are scrolling and that's what they're seeing. So that's on YouTube. Oh, right. Yeah. So in Instagram Reels and TikTok, it doesn't matter what's your cover. So I'm just lazy and I just don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't even use hashtags. Yeah. So would you say it doesn't really matter in terms of virality? You don't really 100%. Mean. I mean, check the most viral clips that mm. you see on social media. I don't think they're putting effort into their descriptions or their um, covers. So what is it? Mm. Just the face then? It's not the face. It's the content itself. So it picked up. It worked once. And then I kept milking it. And because... I kept milking it, it discovered its own audience. And now there's like a massive audience that like to watch this content. Mm. I mean, I'm sick and tired of it, honestly. <laughs> I can't I can't be bothered with my own content at this point. But wait, wait, you can't be bothered? Yeah, like... Isn't that concerning? It is extremely <laughs> concerning. <laughs> that is extremely concerning, but yeah, it yeah. works. So why stop? Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Would you like to do any other like comedy, like stand-up comedy? I have stage fright, so I don't know if I do stand-up. Yeah. But... Um, Within the world of um, content, I am planning on exploring different niches. Mm. Like one of the things that I'm going to start doing very soon, and I did test it and it did well. I'm going to make fun of a lot of real estate brokers. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take that. the piss out of every real estate broker out there. Mm. <laughs> so, Is that just in here? Or no, it's just going to become part of my content. You know, globally. globally I think yeah. it would be good that would be good because yeah, the housing market is big everywhere. You know? yeah. mm. True. Everyone needs to buy a house. Yeah. Or do they? <laughs> you know <laughs> that's that's a that's a different conversation yeah right <laughs> yeah. so we'll just I, i'm planning on that for a while i actually made a couple of videos where i was wearing uh red shorts and a blazer yeah. and it was hilarious it was nice yeah so you've got some content coming then yeah yeah yeah, 100%. yeah no, that's decent. but in terms of like virality what do you think are the main factors that can get someone viral there's many factors i mean i think the top factor would be the idea itself the mm. idea of the content like is it different? And if it's not different, is it something that there's a demand for in the market? And when I say market, I mean people who are scrolling and watching your content. Mm -hmm. So um, like re recently I did this video for English or Spanish for the oh, yeah, um, Euro Cup. And there was a huge demand for that topic. And we oh, made that yeah, video yeah, yeah. on the spot and it got 5.4 million views. What's crazy is because it's England versus Spain as well. Yeah. So that, so that whole meme of English or Spanish, we merged it into the whole England versus Spain. And if you check out the video, you'll see it now. It's one of the best performing videos in the last one month on my page. Mm. So basically things that are trending at the moment as well. Things that are trending, news, um, or topics. Like there are some topics that are timeless, mm. like weight loss. Yeah. You know, if you talk about losing weight, there's like fat people everywhere. Mm. Uh, if you're talking about getting a job, getting hired, so that's so that's something that no matter who's making videos on it, in humor or in an educational standpoint, if you're talking about recruitment, you're going to go viral because everyone's looking for a job. Or if you're talking about cars, everyone has a car, right? So if you figure out the right way to make a video on cars, whether it's funny or serious, you will get good traction. So try to make it out relatable as well. Yeah, it has to have some uh, value point for the viewer, right? And Football. You'll see some football coaches out there uh, that are super viral, football clubs. A lot of reaction videos. Yeah. Reaction videos, yeah. Reaction videos, like, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't want to make reaction videos my main uh, go-to for making content because that's like mindless content. Like, there's no real value over there. It's just you're mm. repeating someone else's video. But if you're talking about making content yourself, um, you have to kind of bridge what you like doing in your own life or you like to watch as content and try to create that for your audience. Mm, okay, that's decent. You've also got a social media agency. That's right. Yeah. Um, we started in 2020, it's a canine unit, oh, okay. and all we do is make TikToks for uh, businesses and individuals. So was that before you went viral? Or? So it happened parallel to me going viral. Mm -hmm. I, I experienced Twitter virality before canine unit. I did experience a little bit of TikTok virality, nothing major, like 50K followers or 60K followers. And then as the agency started growing, so did my TikTok page, but n neither of them had anything to do with each other. I mean, maybe I got more experience by filming content for people, but my own content was always something that I was 
trial and error, trial and error okay. consistently. So the agency, you just like help people go viral? Yes. Yeah, so we, we sit down with our client, we brainstorm mm-hmm. what they're trying to tell the people out there in the market and then come up with the best possible, I wouldn't say script because we don't like scripting, mm-hmm. the best possible way of shooting that video and making it look organic. So it shouldn't look like you're forced to make that video. It should look like this is naturally flowing, Natural, yeah. you yeah. know. And then we shoot it, we edit it, we post it. Yeah. Would you say that's more profitable than your like one hundred percent TikTok doesn't pay you anything? Yeah. <laughs> Instagram doesn't pay what you about, anything. Uh, do you pay for ads? You said it was just all organic. Zero ads, all organic. None of our clients that we worked with, including my own page. Uh, Facebook no, ads, Google ads. I don't I don't even know. What about how. SEO? Zero. None of that. Nothing, bro. Yeah, because we get a lot of emails, people saying, uh, well, SEO, your channel, stuff like that. So do you believe in stuff like that? I think it works 100%. Like mm. if you're trying to sell a product, yes, um, you have to rank your website up there. Your channel should have good keywords in it. I mean, these kind of things matter more on YouTube, in my opinion. Uh, on TikTok and Instagram, the game is so fast. It's I feel like the only differentiating factor is your video itself. I like to put my own username or the topic as a hashtag in that video so that if someone searches that term again later on, I'm going to be the first one that pops up. But does that help me go more viral? I don't think so. No. Would you class yourself as an entrepreneur or comedian? Man, the the, the term entrepreneur is so uh, <laughs> stretched and dragged. It's, it's like just like the term influencer. I mean, uh, I'm just a content creator. Content creator. Yeah, okay. I'm just a content creator who does business within that field. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say is your most viral video then? Um, well, there's one on my Instagram right now with 54 million views. This is this year. Um, and on TikTok, I have another page where I was trying to sell a product and that got 50 million views. What product was that? It was a mask. Uh, it went viral during COVID where okay. they print your face on your mask. I don't know if you saw. Uh, no, they I basically think, think print your that. face onto the mask. Yeah, yeah, it looks mask. like you're, you're not wearing a mask. Yeah. <laughs> I went super viral uh, and I was trying to sell that, but it didn't, it went viral, but the product uh, didn't sell because it was my face. So why would <laughs> someone buy my face on their face, you know? Yeah. Um, and for clients, I mean, uh, I've, I've seen videos reach up to a hundred million views. Oh. hundred million views? Yeah. So, all right, that's decent, man. Yeah. So like hundred million, is that like, it's gone into the algorithm basically, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So do you think that's doable for everyone? hundred million? It's subjective. Uh, everyone can go viral. Everyone can get 100 mil, 60 mm. mil, 1 billion. Uh, it's just how long it would take to get to that point and how much demand there is for what they're making content about. Like, if you're, like, are there 100 million people who are interested in this topic? You got to ask yourself that. Uh, mm. Mr. Beast, he's got billions of uh, yeah. views on YouTube shorts. Yeah. I don't know how he gets that. I mean, how long has he been creating this content for like almost seven or 10 years? Yeah, yeah. You know, there is a lot of work put into it. And then he also has a huge team behind him now that consistently just analyzes audience behavior. Mm-hmm. And I think that's key when you're going viral. So yeah. he, I mean, I was watching, I watch a lot of his podcasts and he was mention, mentioning that in the beginning, his friends were just sitting and analyzing thousands of titles and thumbnails and hooks. Mm-hmm. And from what they did, I mean, they, they mined their own data. People are mining crypto. People should be mining data, yeah. right? So they they got their own data and then they researched that and they came up with what they're doing now. And they're getting good with, views. And they're getting good traction on that. So I think if anyone puts in the time and effort to research towards the goal that they're trying to achieve, they will get some sort of success because once you have data on your back, you can always create and test and then fail and test and then fail and then you know what to do next. You just have to crack yeah. the algorithm. Yeah. yeah so, so you'd say it's based on like topics and what people, what, what there's the demand for? Yeah, 100%. So what would you say is like the most popular topic like in terms of content creation? Well, um, it, it, it differs geographically. Mm. Like in, in the UAE lately, whenever I make a video with a client, <clears throat> that's something to do with... Um, Money, <laughs> it works. Money, yeah. money, yeah. Yeah, money, it works. Uh, if you hold money in front of the camera, and you go like, "Hey, can I? What can I get for fifty dirhams?" You know, in this restaurant, or like, if someone's showing their yacht, so hey, how much did you get this yacht for? 
or like how much do you pay for rent or like uh, what is your salary or what do you have in your bank account? These kind of things work. Or mm. there's another uh, thing that I've seen that's really working well right now. It's if you go into these industrial areas in Sharjah or like in Dera and Naif and you ask the shopkeeper, how much is this used chair for? So that's one of my clients, Alex from Burger 28. We've done a lot of that content. He just goes and he asks, how much is this for? And it's like a ridiculously cheap price. So that'll yeah. get like 900,000 views, a million, easy. No way. Everyone wants to learn about money. I think that's probably why. People are nosy. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, people are very nosy. <laughs> uh, if you compare car brands, if you compare Lexus with a Toyota, or if you compare a Range Rover with another brand, luxury brand, you know, that we've seen work as well. Mm. Um, there's a lot of stuff. Like I, a lot of stuff that you already see on TikTok, but of course, and one one thing which is very prominent is that if someone says Dubai, mm. and then you put whatever in front of it, you can get views. Yeah. Like in Dubai, it's the easiest. Dubai is the easiest city to do this, or Dubai is the safest city for this. Dubai is the cleanest city. Uh, how much salary do you need in Dubai? Yeah, stuff yeah. like that. The virus, that's viral, yeah. yeah. What about so, comedy? People want to laugh as well. A lot of people. Comedy is subjective, man. I mean, I don't think what I'm doing is comedy, honestly, on my page. It's just like the opposite end of comedy. Like it's the lamest form of comedy. <laughs> and then there's like really funny people like Sean. Uh, my parents are divorced. Yeah, Love that him, guy. Yeah. yeah, that's pure comedy for me. For me, that's comedy. But for some people, that's nonsense, you know. Mm. And so, again, you kind of want to get inspiration from who you like within the world of comedy. And then you create. Yeah. So who would you say is your inspiration? Just Rain being on the top. I love that guy. Um, I love. I, I recently wa started watching The Office, okay. the US version, and I love what Steve Carroll has done. He's a huge inspiration, I would say, for my comedy today. Yeah. Um, Nathan For You from Comedy Central. Uh, he oh, does a lot of uh, parodies of... Um, he basically goes and he tries to help businesses increase their sales. It's hilarious. Okay. What about like Kevin Hart, Cat Williams? In stand-up... Uh, I really like Louis C.K. I really like his style of comedy. Uh, I don't really watch much in that f space. I mean, I, I stumbled upon Louis C.K. once and I really liked what he had. But yeah, that's yeah. that's about it. If you could have a sit down with any of them, who would you, who would you choose? Just Rain. Just Rain. Any yeah. day. Just Rain. Yeah, have, you, have you ever clubbed with him? Or? No, no, no way. <laughs> yeah. He's all the way in Canada and uh, I, don't, I don't think he knows <laughs> if yeah. I exist. So you'd say, you'd say that's your dream club? 100% man. I mean, I started making videos after I started watching him. So he was a heavy um, inspiration for me growing up, like with all content, I would say. I, I mapped him a lot. Yeah, so just Rain, if you're watching, uh, hit up Fahad. <laughs> we'll, we'll do a collab with Soya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how, how do you reach out to all these? You know, you've collabed on all the reels. How do you reach out to these? You just message them and then collab. I mean, most of the collaborations are like, they're not influencers. Like, if you if you look closely, they're just random friends. people. Yeah, with like hundred <laughs> followers or like uh, no followers, and like they're just my friends. Oh, okay. Some yeah. of them are influencers, which are my friends. Mm, uh, most sense. of the influencers that I've collabed with are really good friends of mine. Yeah, do you uh, reckon the collaboration helps? Depends. Rather than working on your own. Um, I think a collaboration is good to get like a bit of a newer audience, right? Okay, yeah, true. But does it blow you up? I haven't. I haven't done a collaboration which made me go viral. Have you done Sandeep? Mm. That's one also. Yeah, yeah, I've done a lot with Sandeep. Um, I've done Sandeep. Nah, Ahmed Amal as well. Ahmed Amal as well. I think that's, the, that's, when, uh, that's how I found out about you. Yeah, so, so that you was a very, that, that one went super viral, but it wasn't because of me or Ahmed Amal. It was because of what the topic was. Yeah, Cause. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it was, uh, it was something else, man. I completely forgot. It was about if, if you paint your floor blue or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, it turns at first, blue. when I saw it, I thought it was a serious reel. So yeah. I was watching it and then I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. then I was it like, was right okay. here in this studio. Yeah, yeah. Then I kind of go on and I think I went on your page. I was like, oh, I get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of people think it's real, man. A lot of people think that uh, I'm genuinely retarded. <laughs> yeah. But that works. It works in favor of the content. Yeah, Up definitely. And you'd say, so earlier you were saying um, the location. So you said if people mentioned Dubai in Dubai. Yeah, it that makes works. a big difference. But um, would the same thing be like for London or like US? I get this question quite a lot. In fact, I don't know. 
I haven't tried it. I mean, I've tried it in Qatar. So in Qatar, I've said the same thing. I replaced yeah. the the phrase of Dubai with Qatar, and yeah. it worked. It worked. So I would assume it would work in any other location because mm. content is geographically pushed first. You know. Yeah. So I would assume if you're in the UK and if you're like London is the, I don't know, oldest city or if London is one of the nicest cities or something like that. Yeah. Locals like to hear good stuff about their place. Yeah, so that makes sense. We should try that. Yeah, we should yeah. try that one, one, one hundred percent. One day. Yeah. So yeah, uh, give us a brief about your background and who you are. I'm from Pakistan, uh, but born and raised in the UAE. My dad moved there uh, 35 years ago or 38 years ago. He got a job here as a bank, not a banker, like someone who's a teller in the bank. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, uh, my parents, like any other. Uh, Immigrant parents did their best to raise me and get me educated, but I didn't want to get educated, <laughs> so I dropped out of uh, college early what, on. What course? What course? I was in electrical engineering. What well, same uh, as me then? Yeah, I, I was I was studying electrical engineering. I loved physics. I hated math, mm. but I loved physics, mm. and um, I wanted to get into robotics because of Iron Man, Tony Stark. Yeah, like I watched that movie. I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to build robots. I want to build a suit of armor. I want to do this stuff. I want to have my mm. own building. Um, but like slowly within like the first year itself, I was like, what the hell is this? Was that, so first year uni, was it? Yeah. Freshman year. Oh, it okay. was super tough. I was in AUS, in American University of Sharjah. Okay. I got like a 1.37 CGPA, kicked me out. I mean, they didn't kick me out, but like I lost my scholarship, so I had to leave. Mm. Uh, I did my IGCSEs in school, which is the British, uh, Adexel board. I did really well there. I got like straight A's. A star in physics. That's but like man. the second you came in university, life's like completely different. <laughs> um, and then I remember I did some part-time work. I started doing part-time work since I was like 17. Yeah, A lot of part-time work in Dubai. Uh, I've worked with uh, Samsung selling their phones. I've worked in cricket stadiums for like a uh, usher, ticket ushering job. You name it, I've done it. You know, mm. whatever part-time job I could get my hands on. And then I went back to uni and um, I was like, why am I paying... A university fees because I was I was partially paying for my fees with my dad. I used to hurt like I'm paying money that I'm working hard for, mm. and then I'm going back home and I'm opening YouTube and I'm learning the same thing. So you've been learning YouTube, yeah? Yeah, I mean uh, everything that they teach you in your class, you can go on YouTube and you can look up the topic, and there's someone oh, teaching you the yeah, same yeah. thing. So online lesson basically. Yeah, like what if you didn't understand it in class, you can look up that exact same topic, and there's like a hundred videos explaining that topic, mm. or even maybe that exact same equation. Yeah. It's like, why am I paying this university mm. for a degree that's going to prove what? Because I realized there then that I can get a job, part-time job. And I was privileged because I had visa on my father. Not many people have that opportunity. If you're growing up in Dubai, you have that opportunity because, I mean, you have your visa sorted. And that's a major uh, privilege, I would say. Yeah. And so once I saw that, I was like, I don't have to go through this whole four-year process of getting a degree to get a job. I can just get a go, go get a job now. I remember I landed this, um, it was like a commission-based job in this tech company with this Iranian guy. And we were selling RFID chips. It was basically, do you know what Kafu is, which is the fuel app in Dubai? Kafu, oh yeah, I've heard of it. The one that deliver, f- deliver fuel. Yeah, they deliver that, fuel yeah. to your doorstep. Mm. So they, it was the same idea, but for construction companies. Okay. And instead of uh, fuel being delivered to their doorstep, they had their own fuel tankers in these construction companies. So they could control where the f- fuel was transported, uh, measure electronically everything. So I sold this product for like a big um, construction giant. I mean, I opened the door. I didn't sell it. I just walked in and I remember it was it was the craziest thing ever. Vade Adams Contracting. You'll see them. They're doing all the Al-Khil bridges right now. It's a big Greek company. And this was when I was like 19. And because of that... Um, move i made like 20k as my first commission and i was like there is no way on earth i'm gonna go back to university but with my pressure of my family i went back i remember i paid like 8k for my fees and i was like what the hell man i just lost all my money on that yeah and uh shortly after that i resigned i'm not resigned i i left the company that i was working for because i couldn't manage university and uh working and so i ended up working in this media firm for like 10 months, I learned influencer marketing, social media management, and I realized that there's a lot of corruption within the social media space mm. in Dubai. Like marketing agencies, 
will literally charge you out of thin air and not deliver. There was no organic reach concept back then. There was no TikTok or Reels concept. It was just born. It was very new. In 2019 in Dubai, nobody was talking about it. What was it about then? What, what kind Influencer of marketing or Facebook and Instagram. Facebook and Instagram. Uh, paid, paid ads. Paid ads, yeah. Photo shoots, mm. video shoots, hire a model, stuff like that. And that was the strategy. And it didn't help. Like I saw clients get hurt spending a lot of money and not getting There's the no results. returns. There was no mm. return. Mm. I mean, you can't, you can't promise return even with the organic stuff that I'm doing. But when I remember, I got my first gig as a part-time gig with one of my clients. I had left the media company by now. And their video hit 7 million views. 7 million? This is uh, Casa Milano. You can go look it up. It's not as viral today, but if you, it's pinned on their page. It's mm. literally a video of their bathtub. It's a jacuzzi that they were selling. <laughs> And it's just like, it's a satisfying video of the bubbles popping up with the music. I got 7.7 .7 million views. I was like, okay, this is, this is good. It's helping the company. You don't need influencers because I hated influencers. And you don't need a big production crew to shoot your content. That was literally shot on an iPhone. Mm. And that's where it kind of changed. Yeah. Uh, how long did it take you to monetize your content? So my content isn't monetized even today. Uh, when I post a video, it doesn't, I don't get paid for it. But do you have YouTube as well? I do have YouTube, but it's yeah. very new. It's just been six months since I started working on YouTube. I'm okay. still I'm still learning YouTube. TikTok, you don't get paid, you get paid from TikTok? No, unless you go live and beg for money, no. What about brand, what about brand deals? Brand deals, brand deals, yes. Sponsorships. I do very less. Like the last one I did was in Feb. Is that, did you do it on TikTok? Yes, TikTok okay. and on Instagram. So they don't pay you based on followers? Well, brands will pay you based on followers. So okay. that's where I do make money. But that's not sustainable money. Like, you'll make good money for one post. And yeah. unless or until you're spamming your page with brand deals, <laughs> yeah. you can't. And I don't believe in that source of income. Like, that's good side income, mm. which you can always reinvest into your content. But to it really, can't, can't be a main income. Cause... Yeah, it can't be your main income. So that's why the agency helps over there. But... A, like a real source of income could come from YouTube if you monetize your YouTube page. Mm. Are you monetizing YouTube? Man? I'm aiming to get it monetized. I'm yeah. still not that big or I haven't okay. passed the monetization uh, objective yet. And you sell some sort of a product or service through that content. Mm. So, what you, yeah, so what would you say was your like first breakthrough? Like my first breakthrough would be this agency. agency yeah, because agency. that's where life pivoted for me. Like I went from making commission in another job to having clients on retainers mm. and they go from having one retainer to 10 retainers to 20 retainers and then you see real money coming in and that would be that would be where i made a lot of mistakes I spent a lot of money on stupid things i i rented car yeah. <laughs> i rented a car and then got into an accident and wasted a lot of money in the beginning uh it was with me and my business partner who's still with me my best friend majdi we started this business together. So he's smart with money. So having mm. someone with you who's smart with money is very important. Yeah. I'm stupid with money. Yeah. <laughs> like crazy stupid. If it was up to me, I would have done this stuff for free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what would you say is like the biggest mistakes you've made in business? Getting an extremely big office for no reason. Uh, yeah. We got a warehouse, lost a lot of money. Um, we didn't need it. You know, not understanding what you really need. For it. But people think once you start a business, you need an office, you need employees. You don't. Mm. You start small, scale slowly, um, adding, like you, you add overheads you don't realize, which will screw you later. Because when the business will slow down, it always slows down. You won't be able to afford it. Like people hire an accountant, an admin, an HR. Uh, too much. It's too, too, too much. Too you much don't need things. that much salary uh, coming, like paying, paying out every month. You can do most of the things yourself. You can put in the work yourself in the beginning. And mm. today you have so much of it virtual. Yeah, like so definitely. much of it can be done remotely. Yeah, so what would you say are the the most common mistakes that some of your clients make when trying to create content? They're trying to sell and they're trying too hard. Mm. And I always advise against it. So what, so what do you mean by sell? Like, like let's say, I, I'll give you an example of a real estate broker working with me. Okay. Their objective is to sell a house. Mm. Their objective is not to create content. Even if they are paying to create content, they're only creating content for the sake of selling a house. It's a sales pitch. That's it. And mm. they want to make money on the investment that they're making on me. And I always tell them, like, imagine going to the gym and paying a coach. Are you going to ask him what's your ROI for the money that you're paying him? It's mm. the work you put in and then you get results out of that. So people here think 
that you'll pay an agency or a content creator and boom, you're going to go viral without yeah. putting any effort You'll yourself. Put the hard work in there. Yeah. yeah. So it, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. So if, if let's say someone comes to you tomorrow and said, I want to go viral, what are the three most important things I need to do just to blow up? Uh, educate yourself about the space first before we work together. It's very important that you understand what you're getting into. Do your own research. I'll share with you my knowledge, but my knowledge will be like Chinese to you if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I always try to push my clients to educate themselves. Um, number two, uh, be okay with whatever I say as a piece of content idea. Like I could maybe tell you to just stand and record you and do nothing and put music behind it and a text on top because mm -hmm. maybe that'll go viral, right? So give creative freedom. That's very important for me as an agency when I'm working with you because if you don't give me creative freedom and later you're going to be like, hey, we paid you so much money. Why is it not working? Well, because you hired a painter and then you're telling him how to paint, <laughs> you know? Um, and well, the third thing would be to brainstorm together with the client. You should not fully depend on us for the scripts. Clients should, like some of the most viral videos that we've ever created came from the client. Mm. Like a lot of the Tofik crazy, if you've seen him, the owner of Brands for Less or Ahmed Ambal when we were working with him, like some of the most viral videos came from them. We didn't say that. You know, we didn't script that. It was more of just like going back and forth and testing and trying and, okay, look, this sounds interesting. Let's shoot it. Mm. Yeah. Decent. Have you got any other businesses or are you just doing social media? It's been just social media for the last four years. I am looking at diversifying myself. Um, I would look at YouTube as my next business. YouTube, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you, would con you can consider it social media, but for me, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, yeah, so so you uh, going back to your catchphrase, it was uh, isn't that concerning? Yeah. Yeah. So so how did that was that like? Did you plan to say that or did I that? did not plan to say that? I was just <laughs> making fun of podcasts, and yeah. I think I randomly said it in one of my videos, yeah. like in the end. I said, "Isn't that concerning?" I, I need to go back and trace it, by the way, because a lot of people have been asking me this lately, yeah. and then people started commenting, "Isn't that concerning?" "Isn't that concerning?" in every video. Mm. I was like, "Okay." Isn't that concerning? Yeah. <laughs> and I just started saying it in every video. Yeah, yeah. And it worked. And I did that for a year and a half. I still do it even now. And do sometimes you, I don't say it. Yeah, so you don't remember that, like the first video you said it in? It was in Podsters. It yeah. was in this studio. It wasn't in this studio. It was in their old studio. Okay. Uh, it was like maybe a year and a half ago. I'll have to find the video. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it, was un it was natural. It wasn't natural. scripted. Okay. So it wasn't like something you thought of. It was just... No, no. I mean, I always... so. Most of the videos now with this whole podcast is from Reddit or Google. Like I just look up shower thoughts mm. and I just repeat them or people tell me. What was it, sorry? Shower thoughts. So shower like, thought. It's like um, paradox, it? paradoxical questions or like thought-provoking it, questions. It's like high thoughts. So yeah, yeah, high thoughts basically. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just put them in my video and it works. Yeah, but so like if you, if you scroll back and you, if you watch the earlier videos, it was just nonsense. It was like words put together. It oh. wasn't even a sentence. So you've kind of created that into something. Yeah, it kind of just evolved from... So I was making fun of uh, Jumpers Jump podcast. I don't know if you've seen them. Jumpers There's Jump a bunch of Asian them. kids in the US who are doing this uh, conspiracy theories. And the way they oh, do I it... I think I have seen them. Yeah, yeah and yeah, the yeah. way they do it was very cringe. I mean, their content is great, but I was like, this. I need to make fun of this. <laughs> so I started making fun of that. Wait, did, do they say it's not concerning or not? No, they, I don't think so. No. Oh, yeah, because no. there, there's a bit... Yeah, there, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So I started making fun of that. Like, I would take a topic that they spoke about and I would change everything about it and then I would post it in a in a parody podcast. Oh, okay. And that evolved into this. Yeah. yeah. Have, have you done any, like, full podcasts, like, for you, like YouTube? I tried one recently on YouTube where for, like, nine minutes straight, someone was sitting in front of me not saying anything and I was just <laughs> talking nonsense. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't feel it as much and I didn't do it after that. But yeah, I think I should. I should put some effort towards that space. Yeah, because I feel like they're kind of trendy now. Like, you know, the, the parody podcasts yeah. and the, the comedy ones. So. Yeah, I just haven't figured it out yet. Mm, I definitely. wouldn't put my brain towards it. Definitely, man. Yeah, yeah. decent. So yeah, what's your future plans? What, what's, uh, what's, um, I, what's your goals for the next five years? I don't have fixed goals for the next five years. Like... Like, it's not like I want to become someone in five years or something. I, it's it's just like now, like as of now, I have like, yeah. what am I going to do next? Mm -hmm. So I don't know 
far off in the future. I mean, yeah, if you ask me, like, how do you want to be remembered? Or, like, when you die, what, what legacy do you want to leave behind? I want to do something that changes the world for sure. Yeah. Uh, like some positive impact on this planet where people benefit from some work that I've done. Um, mm. That's something that I would love to do. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to make that change. But that's one of... Uh, and it's a never-ending goal that I'm working towards. Yeah, do you have any big plan uh, collabs lined up? No, not necessarily. No. Yeah, any exclusives for us? When you say exclusives, you mean like what I'm working on yeah, as yeah, of so now? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, right now, I'm working on three YouTube channels. Mm. One is my own personal YouTube channel where I vlogged for like 148 days, and I stopped doing it because it wasn't working. And I'm changing that completely. Um, there's the Creator Manual, which is a new channel that I've created where I am educating people about all of what I've learned in the last four years. Mm. And and there's something lined up on YouTube where I'm basically going to challenge myself. And I've not spoken about this publicly yet, but I'm working on it as we're speaking. Mm. And the video will be basically me challenging myself for creating an z- account with zero followers and taking it to maybe 35,000 followers in 30 days. From scratch. So this is showing the showing audience how it's done. How it's done. Yeah. And it's not... So a lot of people have done this in the West. I researched it and I saw that a lot of creators who are social media experts have done this. But what they do is they sit in their room and they do automation videos or like um, AI videos. AI, yeah. yeah. Or like yeah, they just rearrange content. What I'm yeah. going to show is I'm actually going to go out there and film content of myself in different locations and in different scenarios. Mm. And show people that it's possible for anyone. So, so what about on the other side? So let's say for businesses, do you think content creation is an important factor for them? I think it's slowly becoming like your MSID. You need to have an online identity. And if you don't, you're just missing out on free reach. Because mm-hmm. organic reach is free. Yeah, like social yeah. media and stuff like that. Because yeah. I've seen a lot of businesses now as well like, become alive on social media. Yeah, but a lot of businesses are becoming alive, but they're still doing it because they're a business and they're trying to make sales. They're not doing mm. it because they want to create content. So humanizing content is something a lot of businesses are just missing out on. Yeah. But if you humanize your content, like you put the owner of the company in front or some manager or someone who is an expert in that field, you're better off with your content. Yeah, the highest reel we hear is 2 million, 2.1 2 million. million yeah. Ahmed Amal. On TikTok yeah. and Instagram, yeah. Nice. Ahmed Amal. But other than that, we're just trying to keep pushing. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just... If you get interesting stories out there, valuable information, people are going to watch. Yeah, hopefully this one does not. Inshallah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's been a pleasure having you on, man. And uh, inshallah, we can, um, you know, do a part two soon. Inshallah, man. Inshallah, uh, man. It was quick, but it was fun. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Farhad, cool. for coming Thank on. No problem. Thank podcast. you for having me. Guys, if you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye. Take care.